Good evening. Detectives began a murder investigation today after a fire which killed four people at a block of flats in London. They say it was started by an arsonist. Three of the victims were trapped on the third floor. The fourth died after jumping from a window. The flats above a 24-hour grocery store were engulfed in flames. The fire which destroyed the block of flats took more than three hours to bring under control. Firefighters found the bodies of two women and a man in a front room on the third floor. A second man, who jumped to avoid the flames, had his fall broken by an awning that died later in hospital. Today, staff at the 24-hour Bush Food and Wine store below were clearing up. It was only because one of the shop workers was about to go on shift that the fire was spotted. He was forced to jump to safety himself. I was going to be die like those people, they have died. But God has saved me because uh, I don't know what I have done, good thing. My prayers, my, you know, it's a miracle for me. Police confirmed this afternoon that the fire was started deliberately after finding that a flammable liquid had been used. Today they conducted house-to-house -house inquiries and searched neighbouring gardens for anything which could have been used in the attack. Fire investigators found just one badly positioned smoke alarm in the building, although there were fire doors. Being privately rented, the local council wouldn't have inspected the building unless it had been told they'd been converted into bedsits. We'd like to see the in introduction of a national mandatory licensing system. Basically, this means that a landlord would need to obtain a license in order to let out their property. Police are appealing for anyone who was in the Shepherd's Bush area on Sunday morning and saw anything suspicious to contact them. A company which allowed cyanide to escape into a river was fined £7,500 today. Thousands of fish were killed in the River Wye in Buckinghamshire. The National Rivers Authority, which brought the prosecution, said it was one of the worst cases of pollution it had ever seen. Brown trout being released into the River Wye to replace wildlife destroyed when a six-mile stretch of water was contaminated by toxic waste. 5,000 fish were wiped out last December when cyanide escaped from Premier Plating Limited on the Cressex Business Park in High Wycombe. Today, the company admitted two charges of causing pollution to enter the river and a sewer. The pollution affected the Y from the town sewage treatment works to Bourne End, where it meets the Thames. By early morning the next day, the town sewage treatment works was on red alert because of the levels of pollution. Not only did the cyanide pass through the works and result in the fish kill, the next effect was for the sewage treatment works not to be able to operate for several days, which in itself caused uh, further pollution. In court, the company claimed they had stringent measures in place to deal with their waste. Their lawyer argued they hadn't been lax or irresponsible, but that the system had let them down was perfectly evident from the catastrophic consequences. The company could now be sued in a civil action by the NRA over the cost of restocking the River Wye. And that's it. Now let's take a look at the weather with Rob McElwee. Good evening. It's been thundering with rain in the mountains of Morne for the last hour or so. It's prompted a warning for Northern Ireland. This rain will continue as heavy and possibly thundery rain with gusts of wind up to maybe over 50 miles an hour. So it's bound to be some local flooding. The line of thunderstorms stretches just from Belfast Loch down towards the southwest of Ireland. A definite line. In fact, you'd think it was a cold front and it quite possibly is. You can see the rain itself, the lighter colours, greens and uh, yellows, heavy rain, slow to move, hence the warning. Slightly closer, the heaviest has just gone east of Lar and it's still hanging back through the mountains of Moorland towards Drogheda in the Irish Republic. Now ahead of it during the day we've had plenty of bands of rain across Britain and there's a good deal of cloud so it's not going to be a cold night. Indeed pressure is low and that's the thing that features on the map for probably the rest of the week. Things are slow to move eastwards though. That front may not actually clear to the eastern side of the country by dusk tomorrow, so expect a pretty dull day. Not necessarily cold though. The winds are already in the south. Quite strong, touching gale force, but they will swing round to the west as the rain stops. And as you can see, it's a slow process because that's tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. So no problems with frost. Double figures for many in the west and the north tonight and uh, the coldest in Lincolnshire. You'll find the temperature rising during the night. The morning then... Wet for Scotland, much of Wales and Western England, probably brightening up in Northern Ireland, southwest of Wales and Cornwall. And the brighter weather trying to push eastwards as the rain tries to go eastwards, but there's no guarantee of these timings. The rain may well start to come back into Scotland, just for example. But in general, things try and move eastwards, and by evening, we've left with the rain in much of Scotland and the eastern side of England, but showers developing then in Wales and the West Country, probably heavy as well and possibly thundery. Double figures for everybody. Could call it mild as the wind eases in the south. I wouldn't necessarily on the eastern side of Scotland. 
On Wednesday, pressure is low but turning high, which means a few showers with brighter weather for the rest of the day, reasonably mild, and then strong westerlies on Thursday, good deal of cloud in the west. Old habits die hard in the North Sea. Deal me in! You know they're running a poker school. Aye. And every bet's always the last. You get caught again, Cinders. Your NRB. Not required back. There'll be tears. It's Heather. Oh, you say I love you. The stakes are high. Very high. Roughnecks, Thursday, 9.30, BBC One. Now on BBC One, a specially extended edition of Panorama, in which Martin Bashir talks to the Princess of Wales.